Problem number 20 of section 2.1 gives us a scenario in which a pitcher is throwing a baseball with a certain, uh, from a height of 19.6 meters uh, with a vertical velocity of 14.7 meters per second and a horizontal velocity of 43 meters per second. Now, if you recall from the previous section, we were uh, derived a function that would give the height uh, or give the vertical position of an object in free fall. And that, that function was h of t equals minus 9.8 t squared plus the initial velocity times time plus the initial height. Now, problem, or part A asks us to write a function that gives us the height of the ball uh, t seconds after the pitcher throws it. So what we simply need to do is, and to conserve space, I'll write the answer up here. What we need to do is just plug in the initial velocity and the initial position of the ball. So we have h of t equal minus 9.8 t squared plus, now the initial uh, velocity, Recall, remember that we're only looking at, or we're only interested in the vertical velocity. So we see that the uh, initial vertical velocity is 14.7 meters per second. So we have 14.7 t plus the initial position, which we're assuming the, the pitcher is throwing the ball from 19.6 meters above sea level. So our initial, so the problem giving the height, or the function giving the height of the ball t seconds after the pitcher throws it is this function right here. Now, part B asks us what time does the ball hit the ground? Now, we're assuming the ground uh, is going to be, uh, you know, at 19.6 meters. So, what we want to know is when does h of t equal 19.6 at what time or at what value of t? Well, let's just find out here. We have we want to take minus 9.8 t squared plus 14.7 t plus 19.6 equals 19.6. All right. So if we subtract off 19.6 from both sides of the equation and rewrite a little bit, we get 9.8 t squared equal to 14.7 t. Now one solution to this is t equals zero, but at t equals zero the ball is in the pitcher's hands, so that's not the value we're looking for. We're looking for a positive value of t uh, that is strictly greater than zero. So if we assume that t is not greater or is not equal to zero, we can cancel out a t from each side. That gives us 9.8t equal, is equal to 14.7, which gives us our desired t value, 14.7 over 9.8. And that will be measured in seconds. Now for part C, we're asked to find um, how far the ball travels horizontally before hitting the ground. Now we assume that the ball has constant horizontal or constant horizontal velocity, so assuming that there's no drag from the wind or spin of the ball, et cetera. So we know that the distance is going to be equal to the velocity times the time. And uh, from part B found that the time is three seconds. So the velocity, constant velocity is 43 meters per second times constant time, or the time, which is three seconds, will be equal to 129 meters. All right, now for part D, we want to determine the intervals on which the ball is rising and the interval on which it's falling. So to do that, we need to first find the critical point. Uh, or critical point or points of the function h. So we find h prime of t 
is equal to, let's see, it will be negative 9.8 t plus 14.7. And we set this equal to zero. And that will imply that 9.8t is equal to 14.7, or t equals 14.7 over 9.8, which reduces to 1.5 seconds. So the critical point is um, at, t at time equals 1.5 seconds. Now we need to find out what the derivative is doing um, at time between time equals 0 and 1.5 and between time equals 1.5 and 3. So let's pick a few sample, pick a couple sample points. Our critical point here at 1.5. Let's pick, uh, say, 1 and 2. All right, now we'll compute the sign of the derivative at each of these points. Now the derivative evaluated at 1 is going to be minus 9.8 times 1 plus 14.7, which is clearly going to be positive. So we know on the interval 0 to 1 or 0 to 1.5, uh, the sign of the derivative is positive. And we repeat this for uh, the point 2. This will be negative 9.8 times 2, or negative 19.6, plus 14.7. And we can see that this is clearly going to be less than 0. So the sign is negative on the interval 1.5 to 3. So we see that it's on this interval here, since the derivative is positive, will be increasing. And on the interval 1.5 to 3, the height will be decreasing. And finally, part E asks, when does the ball reach its maximum height? Well, it reaches its maximum height at a critical point. Well, it turns out there's only one critical point here, which is time equals 1.5. And intuitively, it makes sense that it should be a maximum if the pitcher is you know, throwing the ball upwards and it's falling to the ground. Uh, it would be a little difficult for that to be a minimum. But we can check that that's true because the derivative actually does, in fact, go from positive to negative. So uh, the ball reaches maximum height. at time equals 1.5 seconds.